So you mentioned that cancer and, and heart attack, well, heart, is heart attack or heart disease? Heart disease. Heart, heart, disease. heart disease. What's the difference between heart disease and heart attack? All right. I would thank you for that question, Petra. So, because a lot of persons come and they would say, I have a heart problem. But when you ask what exactly is happening, so let me break it down a little. So the heart is a muscle. And so the muscle can become diseased. Mm -hmm. It can become like a balloon shape. And so we call it enlarged. Mm -hmm. Or hypertension can cause it to become more muscular and thick. Mm -hmm. So that's the muscle structure. And then there's the valves. So they act like swinging doors, allowing blood from the upper chamber to the lower chamber. And sometimes they do not open or close properly. So there's leaking of blood or there's difficulty in the blood going through. Then there's the electrical system. So just like this building, there's an electrical system that causes the heart to contract. And at times it may be too slow or it may be too fast. I'm not sure our listening public may know someone who has a pacemaker. And so the heart at some time, at some point, the electrical system had an abnormality. A shot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they <coughs> then had an extremely slow heart rate and then required a pacemaker. Mm -hmm. So this, um, simply put, and we know of persons having a hole in the heart. So some persons are born with an uh, abnormality in the muscle. And so blood is flowing from one chamber to the next when it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So we have the oxygenated blood, blood with oxygen and without mixing. And that's, you're born with it. And then the others you like acquire with aging, just with life. So is it possible that I could not have any of those regular symptoms like their heart um, diabetes and so on and mm -hmm. so forth but would have been born perhaps with a defect that was not diagnosed and then that could impact on me in my little life yeah that's definitely possible coming to check it tomorrow right and then they you have to look for those <laughs> yeah the heart attack you asked me also mm -hmm. so this is the heart artery so these right. are the blood vessels providing blood to the heart muscle mm -hmm. So cholesterol, calcium lays down in the artery, which is like a pipe. And so blood is unable to flow freely. And the heart muscle cannot get the oxygen it needs. And so the patient may have chest pain. So that's where the heart attack. So it is the most common cause of cardiovascular <coughs> disease, but it's not the only okay. component of heart disease. Right. Okay. I follow you. I follow you. So we can have heart attacks. We can have heart failure. Heart failure. That's not the same as a heart attack. No. That's true. No, you just explained that. So you can have heart attack. We can have heart failure. We can have what else? Um, a fast or slow heartbeat. Okay. Or irregular heartbeat. And so persons can die from all of these things. Mm -hmm. And heart murmurs. Some people they have heart murmurs. A heart murmur. That's the one with the valve. The yes, the one that's opening and closing okay, properly. All right, good, yes. all right, all right. So, what are we through your foundation? What are you hoping to achieve? Oh, well, in, this is Heart Month. Um, heart is in Heart Disease Month, or Heart is in Valentine's Month, or both? Heart. Probably both. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. both. But for mm -hmm. us, we are focusing on the heart itself. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that very important organ. We want to, our first goal is to have this awareness. Um, we'd like to thank you for having me on the show. Persons need to, and our theme is, mind your heart. Mind your heart. We, we need to protect our hearts. But first, we need to be educated about what it might be, um, challenges, it might come, diseases of the heart. Mm -hmm. And um, so our first goal is increasing the awareness of heart disease. Mm -hmm the things that put you at risk for heart disease. And then later, we want to do research, offer screening, like blood pressure checks. You mm -hmm. can get um, complimentary free blood pressure checks at the foundation. Okay. So you could walk in anytime mm -hmm. and have that done. Mm -hmm. And uh, research into these diseases. Mm -hmm. What, as you said, our culture, Antigua, what affects Antiguans and other Caribbean persons leading to the increased risk of heart disease mm -hmm. compared to other places. Okay. All right. That's good. Cool. All right. So you're doing what, what are some of the things that we would need to do to eat healthier? All right. No, no, that's not true. What are some of the things that we need to do to maintain a healthy heart? 
All is right. that is that the right? That's that's correct. The correct terminology. Yes. Yes. Okay. A healthy heart. Mm -hmm. So be aware of the risk factors. So some persons already have diabetes. So you need to get your follow up visits. Eat as advised by your physician or your nutritionist, or dietitian. Mm -hmm. And some persons may be aware of what I call the HbA1c. Mm -hmm. This tells us the control that your blood sugar has been um, over time. I do see persons eating, uh, you know, inappropriate foods, knowing that they already have diabetes. What is an inappropriate food? <laughs> Excessive sweets. Oh, okay. Um, high carbohydrate foods. Mm -hmm. But what's a balanced diet? Let's talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. The heart healthy diet. Half of the plate should be vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. And the remaining half is divided into quarters. So one quarter should be the starchy. They're recommending brown rice. Slow down. You realize mm -hmm. that you said half of the plate is supposed vegetables. to be vegetables and fruits. Correct. Mrs. Antigua, half of the plate is supposed to be rice and macaroni. So this is why we think and this, this is, is very important. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Half gotcha. of macaroni or half of the plate is is proteins, mm -hmm. meats. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of rearranging to do mm -hmm. um, to limit this progression. Mm -hmm. So half of the plate, vegetables and fruits, quarter should be starch. Yes, we love our ground provision, but please note the starch, the ground provisions don't go into the vegetable section. No. They go into the quarter for the starch. No? No, it doesn't. So when I eat my green banana and my sweet potato and my cassava, those are... They should be in the quarter of the plate, in the starchy section. Boy, the plate look tight. The plate look tight. So what vegetables am I speaking about? Spinach, cauliflower, broccoli, um, butternut squash. These are what would Cabbage, go in that area. Meat. Cabbage, right. Okay. Half the plate. Mm -hmm. And then right. you could have some lettuce and tomato um, add there. So how regularly you eat when you have half your plate being vegetables? Three meals. And that's it? No yes. snacking? Maybe a fruit, an extra fruit. And don't forget water. How has that been advising us to eat that? In I'm going to make an assumption that most of us don't eat in the manner you just described. That's correct. All right. So how has it been that process of re-education, for want of a better word? I think persons are more receptive. Um, they are alarmed that persons are just dying suddenly. Knowing heart disease might have been the underlying thing. More persons I do see exercising more often. We exercise for seasons. <laughs> like carnival. <laughs> Yes. Well, that's a help. I'm kidding. I, I would <laughs> want us to continue it a bit longer. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I didn't tell you the remaining quarter proteins, um, fish and um, poultry. Quarter. Yes. Remember, it was half and then we divided it into quarter. Oh, quarter. Your plate, antique plate, <laughs> having 150% then when it comes to that. So, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm belaboring this. Mm -hmm. So, like, alcohol. Yes. What role does alcohol play in heart disease, if any? It does. Um, it can cause dilation of the heart muscle, leading to heart failure. What's the point of having all these good things and then you're going to tell me extreme it's moderation? Uh, moderation, it has extreme. to be. Extreme. This sounds like extreme moderation. No, moderation. <sighs> okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, fine. Um, so we are being encouraged to eat healthier. Correct. Uh, so how does that put us in terms of the fact that we have a lot of events in Antigua mm -hmm. and our events are food and liquid, uh, yeah, well, yeah, alcohol driven. Mm -hmm. How does that impact on the whole move to, to have a healthier lifestyle? Or the fact that we dance when we're out, that does the offsetting. I'm hope, I live in hope. No? It is crucial. Um, and young people, young people are being affected. They are coming in with enlarged hearts, mm -hmm. with heart failure. So what are the symptoms of a heart failure? Swollen feet, uh, being short of breath. Sometimes persons can't even shower because they're so short of breath and weak. Mm -hmm. 
um, they can't lay down flat because the fluid is in the lungs mm -hmm. and coughing and the, just extreme tiredness. So I just think no, no issue with partying, but you don't have to be drunk to intoxication level. And so my doing it in very balance, my food and my drink doing and it my too dance. often. Yeah. Doing it too often. He hello, we have a party every weekend. And I'm not, I'm not saying so to be difficult, but I'm just thinking a person to understand Correct. where we're coming from. Mm -hmm. What, what is the relationship between the work that the Heart and Stroke Foundation is doing or plans to do and the say medical benefits? The, the, the I know medical benefits from time to time engages in education campaigns about mm -hmm. uh, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases. Yes. yes. Is there any relationship? Is there any hope for a relationship? Oh, yes. We've reached mm -hmm. out to the medical benefit scheme. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm going to be doing some videos with messages. Okay. Um, they've invited me to do that. And it's a joint effort. Each of us as individuals have to make a decision about protecting our heart, minding our hearts. And then we t teach it to our family. We implement it in our homes, and then it's a wider scale, and it becomes more national after that. But it is definitely a joint effort, mm -hmm. and I have had good response from other foundations and organizations. Okay, all right. So yeah, we we're very pleased to join with Medical Benefits and any other foundation. So your primary function through this foundation will be to do the education. Yes, we, as I said, we're going to be doing complementary blood pressure checks, mm -hmm. expanding further to probably glucose and cholesterol, and research. We need to get data. Hmm. Um, hmm. What's happening to Antigans? And we have a very a mixed population, so all Caribbean people, what's happening mm -hmm. with them health-wise and what can be done to stem this. And I always mention the young people. Because we need to start from that younger age if we're going to limit this progression and the burden later. It's economical. It's also persons missing from work. You're missing your child's wedding. You're not there for their graduation. Mm -hmm. We need to look at it from that perspective. And what are we going to do from now to be able to be there for them later? Okay. Um, you mentioned earlier the numbers. No, before I get to the numbers... We've been speaking to you, but I'm assuming there are other members of the the foundation. Correct. Your board members you'd care to share, or that's not important? We, I do want to highlight them. Mm -hmm. They've come on board very willingly, been very available. Mm -hmm. And uh, Valerie Gonzalez Barrero, mm -hmm. um, she's our PRO and also one of the founding members. Mm -hmm. BJ Tilwani. Mm -hmm. He's a businessman, but right. you know, you need a diverse group mm -hmm. of people. Of course, of course. Sumita Baluja, mm -hmm. she's a wellness coordinator. coordinator. right. And Dr. Rashida Williams, she's a general practitioner. Okay. So this is the, my board. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I want to say a special thank you to them. And we have some other sponsors who've come on board in the early stages, but others also very willing to support us going forward. All right. Do you like go out to churches if they want to have talks, oh, community yes. engagements? I know mm -hmm. you mentioned that you have the blood testing, the sorry, the, the blood pressure testing mm -hmm. at the the office um, for the foundation. Yes. But let's say um, persons want to do that at in their community, can they reach out to you? Yes, I've been doing many of, oh, uh, of these um, reaching outs even before the foundation. Okay, um, they could just write me a letter. I'll call the foundation and then I try and schedule around the dates. But it's something I and the foundation we now as a foundation we're very willing and open to doing. What's the um, number that they could reach the foundation at? Four six two mm -hmm. four nine seven three. Four six two four nine seven three. All right. You mentioned earlier that the heart diseases are as prevalent or sometimes more prevalent than cancer. What are, what are our numbers like, and how do we compare regionally and even internationally? Mm -hmm. Well, internationally, it's a scary trend. Um, in the U.S., we know of the obesity epidemic, and heart disease is number one there. 
And so the international data is actually showing that cardiovascular disease or heart disease mm -hmm. is the number one cause of death. Okay. okay. Um, regionally, it is also a major issue. So most countries, it is the same thing that's seen. So the regional level, we need to be very aggressive about it. Um, Bahamas has recently said no um, soft drinks, no sodas in the schools. And I think Grenada also might have right. done so that recently. So we Do you think that's steps? something that we could manfully move to? How how we? Because uh, I'm thinking most of our vendors, especially around the schools, that's what they, they that's how they make their bread. So if we were to tell them no sodas and and the other things, perhaps would be comparatively more expensive. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the other side because right. you want a healthier nation, indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's the cost of the economic cost. Who right. pays? Who pays that cost? Mm -hmm. I think uh, maybe the duties have some of these costs a bit higher, so maybe the government could do something about that and uh, encourage more natural drinks and the juices that might be coming in, apple juices, orange yeah. juices, mm -hmm. um, and have price control. So Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to share in terms of, ladies and gentlemen, sorry, you're listening to We're the Ones on Point FM, and this is your host, Petra Williams, and I'm speaking with Dr. Mead of the Heart and Stroke Foundation, and we're just looking at, um, it's Heart Month, not to be confused with Valentine's Month, y'all, you commercialized people, and we're looking at the, the incidence of heart disease and... Uh, Basically, she's sharing on the foundation that is a, 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 a underground now doing some work. And we're looking at some of the causes and some of the things that we can do to have healthier lifestyles so that your heart can last longer. Did I put that right? Yes, right. you did. Thanks. Right. So, I, I, and I did ask even before I, I, um, we move on to if you have anything you want to share. That I'd ask if you have an indication as to the numbers. I know you said that we, we, mm -hmm. we are right there in terms of our rate internationally, yeah. but what the kind of numbers are we seeing on the ground in Antigua? All right. So, um, I did get some information from the Mount St. John's Medical Center, mm -hmm. and uh, they've in 2018, 600 persons. Entering the emergency room at initial assessment, we're taught to have either a precursor to a heart attack or a heart attack itself. That's a lot of people. So it may be angina, yes. Um, they came in with chest pain sounding like a heart attack and were actually diagnosed with a heart attack or angina. Okay. So 600, it's, it is pretty significant. That is, yes, it is very significant. All right, so is there anything that you'd like to, that I may have missed in my questions, that you would like to share with our listening and viewing public? Okay, I want us all to, as individuals, make a decision about what we're going to do. Um, too many times, persons, I'm not going to the doctor, um, but they not even willing to get their blood pressure checks. And hypertension is only diagnosed when the blood pressure reading is known. Mm -hmm. So it's called a silent killer. And uh, because it creeps up on you, you're fine. You go to work, you come home, you do everything as usual mm -hmm. until you get a stroke. Right. So it's, it's bruised and grows and increases um, while it's not causing you any symptoms. And uh, or your heart is enlarging or your kidneys are under this excessive pressure and y then you need dialysis. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people come to the emergency room pretty ill or stroke or now they suddenly need dialysis because they never even got a, a blood pressure checked. They've never had any blood work done. And uh, these are emergency cases where we could have detected it earlier. Medication, taking the medications, yes, they have side effects, some of them, but by and large, they're well, they're, many persons don't have any issues. But if you do have a problem, speak to your physician about it. Um, there are many options. It can be switched, the dose can be decreased. There are many options. So it's really want to encourage a discussion with your physician. So in other words, you're saying make sure that you get regular checkups. Yes. And when you have your medication, take it. Yes. And if you have any issues, check with your doctor. Correct. All right. And I think we could limit a lot of the emergent, urgent mm -hmm. situations and how ill people are when they come in. Because a lot of times it's so advanced that there's not much we could do to help them. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. 
we just completed our first interview for the afternoon. And mind your heart. And uh, with the theme, mind your heart, from the Heart and Stroke Foundation with Dr. Mead. And I'm sure that we will be hearing lots more from her and her team throughout the course of this month. <coughs> Sorry, Heart Month. And for the rest of the year, I want to wish you the best. I'm looking at my slim self. <coughs> Sorry, my formerly slimmer self. I think I exercise enough so I should cover it. But I'm going to come check my heart just to be on the safe side. Thank you very much, Doctor. You're very welcome, Petra. Thank you for having me my as pleasure. a representative of the foundation. My pleasure. Okay. <coughs>